Hello everyone, welcome back to Just My Stupid Opinion. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video quite like this, um, and I will be eventually addressing where, I, like, why I left and where I've been over the last, uh, last year, year and a half or so. But first I just wanted to make a video about something that's been weighing on my mind for a bit now. Um, and I'm not really sure how to go about this, so I'll try and just kind of get into it. But I've been thinking a lot lately about, about once, once COVID is done, once this is all over, about how there's going to be no way that we can ever really go back to normal. Now, eventually... And it seems like the world is starting to move this way. You know, mandates will be lifted. Mandates will be lifted. You won't have the mask or anything anymore. The social distancing or or the the restrictions on the amount of people that can be that can be in your stores, things like that. Those will eventually go away one day. But the damage that has been done not just by the government, but by their collaborators, means that we will never be back to the way that we were. Because how could a lot of us ever forgive those people for what they did? The people that have been behind the government this entire time, the people who are for the mandates, the people who are for people losing their jobs, in areas such as Quebec who were in favor of, of taxing those who didn't get the vaccine or trying to deny them access to health care or the grocery store. How is it that we could ever go back to normal with these people? The things that they were willing to accept were the most anti-Canadian thing ever. And... And for, for the people who have been either unvaccinated or have not been for all these mandates this entire time, or the most of the time, how are we supposed to go back to calling these people our peers, our fellow citizens? They like to blame the unvaccinated for, for everything that have, we have faced over the last two years. When in fact it has been those who have been, who have been most on the government side, who's been pro lockdowns, pro mandates, pro mask, pro vaccine, that are actually the ones that are responsible for this continuing on as long as it been, and it has been, and it seems clear to me that this is the case, because when a lot of people were going along with the flow, and many people did it because they just wanted to be left alone. Many people didn't agree with this stuff, but they said, you know what, I'll wear the mask, I'll get the fucking shot, and then, you, you know what, the government will leave me alone, and I can get back to my life. But that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. They still re required more and more and more, to the point where even people that were sort of quiet, you know, just, just leave me alone, got so pissed off that they've locked down the border between Alberta and Montana and they're locking down the capital with no, with no plans of leaving. And there are those who are upset at them for doing this, for those that are trying to, to fight for their freedoms, who have had enough, who finally said, I'm going to do something about this. Those people that are pro-mandate, they are... Uh, it, it, they're the reason that we've we're in this situation we're in now. We're still dealing with this situation, and they're painting the people who are actually fighting for their freedom, for their rights back, as the enemy. In a lot of ways, I look at these people the way that the French looked at collaborators after World War II. There were so many Frenchmen that were so angry with the collaborators that they sold out their own people, they sold out their country to try and make life a little easier on them. And that's how I view these people. I've heard some people, and that's their, their 
point of view is that, you know, they have sympathy for a lot of these people because they're brainwashed. I don't have that sympathy for them. And the reason I don't have that sympathy for them is because most of these people are adults who are perfectly capable of doing their own research, finding out the truth, but they've been unwilling to do that and they've just taken anything they saw on the TV at face value, which has continued the situation that we find ourselves in. So even... That's why I won't accept this idea of the, of the sympathy towards them and that they've been brainwashed. These people were not held down and waterboarded. They were not given sensory deprivation. They were not forced to stay up for days on end while a message was blasted into their brain like many prisoners of war in the past have had to suffer through in their own form of torture and brainwashing. These people if you consider it brainwashing, allowed this to happen to themselves willingly. And it ranges. You got people closer to my age that are like this. You got people in, in their 70s, 80s, 90s that are thinking like this. And it's unacceptable because it may be a cliche, but it's a true statement that in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. And this is exactly the situation. A lot of the data that they were basing the COVID mandates on didn't even add up based on studies that were available 10, 20, 30 years ago. Like a good one, one that people are starting to acknowledge, but people have been saying since the very beginning are the masks, how they don't prevent the spread of, of a virus. You, the fibers are 10 times larger than the virus itself. It's like using a chain link fence as a mosquito net. All this data has been available to these people for quite literally decades, but they couldn't be bothered to look it up. For me, what blows my mind is a lot of the same people that told me, don't believe I, when I was growing up, don't believe everything you see on TV are the ones that believe everything they see on TV, everything they see on the news. That they've extended what's going on and I'm supposed to, after this is all gun, done, go back to just being okay with them? Go back to the way things were? Especially because someone like me was one of the people that decided not to get the vaccine. I've been pretty open about that. I know I haven't been on here in a while, but I've been still around on different social media platforms. And I've said that I've not gotten the vaccine. And people... The, the, the amount of the, the things that people were okay with doing to people like me, to the, pe the unvaccinated, what they wanted to do, take their jobs from them, prevent them from being able to support their family, pay their bills, to, to going, trying to go as far as saying they shouldn't have access to healthcare, they, can't, they shouldn't be allowed into the grocery store. I did a sh stream recently with Seamus in where I dropped this news about where I'd been, and I could do it here now, and I'll still address it again on another video where I talk about where I've been. But one of the reasons I've been gone so long is that in the time I've been, I've been gone, my wife had a kid. These people would gladly, these people would gladly have seen her starving on the side of the road my kids starving on the side of the road because daddy decided not to get the vax. Daddy and mommy said they didn't want to put an experimental vaccine into their veins. That is the end result of their line of thinking when you're denying access to this type of thing. From people being able to pay their bills when people are not allowed into the grocery stores. It didn't get that far, but considering how much... That when we go back to the beginning, we go back to the beginning of 2020, how much that we said wasn't going to happen that did happen, I take everything that these people say seriously and as a threat. Maybe right now it's not true, but I'm not denying that it could be the case in the future. So why should I go back to being okay and fine with people and call them my peers who would have gladly seen my kids starving, starving just because daddy decided not to get the vaccine. I don't think I'm being hyperbolic on that. But the more and more I think about this, the more and more I think about what they were allowing to do, the, the completely 
anti-Canadian mindset that these people adopted. The th these were things that our country was supposed to stand against that they're supporting. It's All I can think about is the hatred that I feel for these people. The type of hatred I've never felt before. The type of hatred that you feel in your gut. That's the type of thing that, that I feel when I think about these people and what they are okay with. A real raw hatred. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a feeling I like having. But that's how I feel. And just, I can't respect someone like this. I can't. They've been, they, it's monstrous the type of things that they want to do. And on top of that, the cowardice of these people. The absolute fucking cowardice of these people. Because a lot of these people are adults, you know, my age, almost, I'm almost 30 now you know, my age, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 60s. And these adults have, dis in a lot of ways, destroyed or really damaged the future for children in order to make themselves feel safe. The amount of damage that's been done to kids' social life and their mental state amongst kids Drug, abuse, drug use is on the rise, self-harm is on the rise, suicides are on the rise. They've, in order to make themselves feel safe, they have put, they have, have used kids as cannon fodder, trying to, to damage their future. And not to even mention about the lack of education that they've gotten over the last two years. That is one consistent thing I have heard from a lot of parents is that the, the education has sucked. These kids are falling behind. Many of them haven't allowed them to go out and socialize. And even you look what the schools are doing, forcing kindergarten kids to wear masks. I have a school by my house that had the schoolyard separated into zones, which I'm not sure if it was for just for different classes or if it was for different grades completely. But not even going to let kids socialize with their friends because they happen to be in a different class. All this so that these adults can feel safe for themselves because they are so scared. Such fucking cowards. That they would do this to small children. How is that supposed to be forgiven? How am I supposed to go, how am I supposed to respect somebody like that? How is anyone supposed to respect somebody like that? I, I don't understand how you possibly could. And just the more and more if I watch this played out, they they're even trying to go after kids now. They can, we all know that they're they've targeted going after 12-year-olds in order to get the vaccine. And it's getting to the point that they want these 12-year-olds to have vax passes. And if they're not going to get it, they're going to ostracize them, from ostracize them from society, just like they have with the rest of the adults that didn't want to get the vaccine, to children. Not let them do this. Not let them go into restaurants. They can't go to these family get-togethers. They would do this to children, and they think that they're the fucking good guys? They think they're moral, and that they're noble, and that they're virtuous, when they're willing to do this to children, do this to everyone else? Most people just wanted to be left alone. The, the convoy that is sitting in my city in Ottawa right now, and the convoy that is sitting in uh, uh, Coots, I think is the pronunciation, Coots, Alberta, these are made up, vast majority of it, by people who, who just wanted to be left alone. And many of them got the vaccine. There's plenty of people who are sitting in both of these convoys and all over the rest of the country and who are supporting these convoys that are double vaxxed, got their passport and everything, but they did it because they thought that they would be left alone. And they weren't. And these are not the people that I'm angry at. These are not the people that I hate, you know? Somebody who did this tr hoping that 
they would just happen to go back to their normal life. That's not the people I'm upset at. I'm the, upset at the people who continue to support these mandates. I'm upset at the people who, until up to very recently, when the tides have begun to shift, and ended up doing a heel turn. Those who were all for the mass mandates and the lockdown and ostracizing people from society. In order, and then, then they suddenly did a 180, a heel turn and said, no, no, you know, these are wrong. Those are the people I'm angry at. Not the people who were against us from the very beginning or the average person that, again, wanted to be left alone. They're, those are people I could actually call peers. But people who support these mandates and always have and what they've called for, it's, like I said, it's just a deep hatred in my gut that I can feel. And I've never felt that feeling before. And I don't think I'm alone. I think a lot of people have done this. And when this is all done, we're supposed to forget about what they did? No fucking way. These people should be forced to remember what they did for the rest of their lives. Their ideas were monstrous. The way they conducted themselves was disgusting. And they are weak, cowardly, pathetic people. That's who these people are. And there's absolutely no way I could ever go back to respecting somebody like that. Somebody like that doesn't deserve respect. And like the example I gave earlier, to me, they are like the French nationals that collaborated with the Germans in World War II. The view I have of them is what the average French citizen thought about those collaborators. And the punishment, the punishment that they put out against these people afterwards. Those are the thoughts that run through my head right now. It's not a good feeling. It's not something I like. But I can't help it. I can't help it because this is the line that many of us have been pushed to. Even when they started saying things like, you know, you can't go into restaurants, you can't go to gyms and stuff. Many of us who didn't want to get the vaccine, we didn't like it, but we were more or less like, okay, that's fine. That's a small sacrifice to pay in order for us to just not have to inject this into our body. But it kept going further than that. And then they came after our jobs. They came after our ability to look after our families, to pay our bills, to feed them. And they, that didn't stop them there. They still wanted more. No more health care. Pay a, a tax because you decided not to get the vax. Don't let these people eat. Don't let their families eat. Don't let their children eat. And that's when people like me, the people who decided not to get the vax, that's when they really got angry. That's when we really started to have that pushback. And that's when, for those who feel the same way, that's when that hatred really started to boil up in your gut. It's always a matter of... I'm sure I'm not alone when I say this, but... I can let a lot of things that happen to me go. You know, I can forgive that, forgive that, maybe not in this situation, but, you know, a lot of people, you can say what you want about me, that doesn't bug me. You can try and say that I can't go out to restaurants, fine. But when you're at the point that you're going to go after my family, then you've crossed the line, and you should, you've crossed a really bad line. And a lot of people are prepared to, to fight before they're willing to, to let their family starve in the street, as an example, or let their family be attacked. This is the thing about the convoy right now, actually, is that 
I don't think a lot of the people, the government officials, the the those who are against the convoy and pro mandate, I don't think they realize what the point of this convoy this convoy is. These convoys for a lot of the supporters in a lot of ways this is the last keep going into the red. I hope I'm not clipping too much. Uh, just audio bar. This is the last protest. Because there have been a number of protests across the country and across the world that have gotten nowhere. But the truckers actually had something to bargain with. Not just locking down the city, the capital, or the border. But these are the people that deliver our groceries, as an example, and supplies that we need in everyday life. So if they decide we're not going to do that, that's a very serious danger to many people across this country. So it's something that can't be ignored. But the government is still, in a way, trying to ignore it. They're, they're not going to meet with these convoy people. It doesn't sound like they really want to change their mind. I don't think they're aware that the point of this convoy is this the last protest. If nothing comes out of this, what other options do people have? The people that are done with this, the people that want to get back to normal, the people that want their freedoms back, which never should have been taken away in the first place. It leaves them with one option. This is why they're prepared to hang out for weeks at a time until they get what they want or they're forced out of there. This is why people came from all over the country. They drove the entire length of Canada to be here for a reason. And that's because it's all or nothing. Once this is done, if their demands are not met, then you're going to see a large number of people that are preparing for a fight. Because calling their MPs hasn't worked. There's no party in Parliament right now that was really fighting to end these mandates and end these lockdowns. The, the politicians that seemed like they were, were going to be against this type of thing weren't. In fact, they supported it, supported it a lot. The, the politicians you would expect that would have defended your rights actually were some of the big, the, some of the worst at trampling on them. They've been called, they've been referred to in the most nastiest of terms. Uh, like, you know, the convoy was, even though it was made up of a bunch of different people from different cultural, ethnic, and religious backgrounds, was being called a white nationalist convoy. And they still have nothing to show for it. None of their freedoms back. So what other options has been left for these people? That's what I don't think most people realize about what's happening right now with this convoy. What this convoy means for a lot of people that are supporting it. It's all or nothing. And once that's done, then I get the feeling that things are going to be really bad. But that's it for me. That was something I just wanted to get off my chest because it's been bugging me for a while now. And just some of the feelings I've been having. Again, I'll be addressing a little bit more about uh, why I left YouTube for such a long time and why I'm back. Uh, I'll be doing that a little bit later, but I just wanted to get this video out. And just sort of go over the things that were on my mind. The things that have been really bugging me lately. Anyway, take care of yourselves all, and I'll see you next time.